Hello everybody, it is um, Andrew's weather predictions here. Today we're going to be talking about a severe weather event uh, today. Um, I'm going to be talking about the longer range pattern. And I've, I've done something interesting here. I actually went with an enhanced risk yesterday um, for damaging wind gusts. Uh, my probabilities for this are... Um, I have a 5% risk of tornadoes, 30% risk of wind, and a 5% risk of hail. So the 30% wind is going to encompass the enhanced risk area. I do have my 5% risk of tornadoes kind of like in this area, general area, something like that. Something like that. Actually, no. Something like this, hugging like the southern edge. Because this week could have some embedded supercells down here. I have a large marginal. I If I would have made this outlook earlier this morning and I would have been up, I probably would have extended the slide a bit further to the north. But, you know... Oh yeah, there's my personal outlook of a large thunderstorm risk. Um, looks like I didn't uh, wipe this all off uh, the right way, but it's okay. Looks like we will have some scattered to potentially numerous thunderstorms today. Uh, main hazard will be damaging wind gusts, but we can't. Uh, main hazard will be damaging wind gusts in tornadoes. A few tornadoes uh, scattered to numerous damaging wind gusts, 70, 75 mile per hour, and then isolated. You can't roll some isolated trail. Now. Let's go on to the National Weather Service's page here. And actually, first, before we do that, let's take a look at your current radar view. So currently, we have a line of strong thunderstorms moving southward across into the slight risk area. And I do expect some of these to become severe soon. Looks like these are more alpha low dominant. Um, I think I'm probably going to pull up Twitter here as we load up this and kind of talk about uh, something that happened last night. Um, let me just look at this. So last night, we had a couple significant tornadoes. Here's one of them. Here's another one. I wasn't up for this. This was late at night. These were kind of uh, north, south, east of Smithville, Mississippi. There was a significant tornado, and there was one kind of by the Columbus Air Force Base radar site. And looked like a pretty significant tornado. And we also had a significant tornado occur in Louisiana last night. Um, we don't really have that many damage reports out there. It was by the Monroe area. We... Yeah, it's an area as a radar hole, but there's a uh, radar from the University of Monroe, Louisiana, so you're able to get that radar on GR2 if you update it, but I haven't done that yet. Currently, we have a line of strong thunderstorms moving across the Birmingham area. I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these go severe soon for isolated large hail and damaging wind gusts. These are just entering the slight risk area. I do expect the highest tornado threat today to be somewhere in this area, right in here, and we will go into that in a second. Current alerts, we have a lot of flash flood warnings across Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama because of this. And we also have freezing watches and warnings and advisories because of this uh, winter blast coming down. We also have a winter storm warning and winter weather advisories up there for an intense winter storm for the interior and northeast. Um, here's day one. Day two, looks like some thunderstorms for Florida. Day three, really not much is happening. Fronts. Looks like around 18Z and 0Z, we're going to have pretty high, pretty decent chance for some severe weather. Around 6Z, we might still have some isolated strong storms ongoing. And then by 12Z tomorrow morning, everything's down into Florida. Maybe we get an isolated severe thunderstorm up at the low pressure in, like, Mich man, not Michigan, Massachusetts. Looks like Friday is going to be very dry. Same with Saturday and Sunday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday next week, it could get a bit more interesting. We could actually see some severe weather Wednesday this uh, next week along this area. And I will be talking about that event eventually in this video, but it's going to take a little bit. Here's what the Storm Prediction Center has. They do have a slight risk, and I have an enhanced risk. A bit different. Um, they are expecting some embedded QLCS tornadoes and embedded supercells with risk. Uh, so we have a slight risk all the way from near Charlotte and Raleigh, North Carolina, down to Jackson, Mississippi area. We also have a marginal risk extending from the Baltimore area all the way into eastern Texas, down to the Carolinas there. We have a 5% risk of tornadoes for that QLCS threat that I was actually talking about here. And this encompasses portions of uh, extreme eastern Mississippi, south central Alabama, and west central Georgia. We also have a large 2% from southern Delaware into Mississippi. Wind is a 15% for all the slight risk area, and hail is a 5% from southern Virginia into eastern Texas. Day two, we have area of thunderstorms across the southeast with no severe weather expected. Day three, no thunderstorms are forecast. 
And now let's just jump into the current environment. So currently, this is the environment across the area. We have a lot of, this is our instability. And you typically want around 1,000 or so with the shear we have to, in place. So we have 2,000 cape here. We have 2,000 cape here. 2,000 in the Carolinas as well. And then we have a broad area of 100 cape. Or not 100, 1,000. Here's mixed layer cape. Um, we have around the same amount of values with that. Uh, let's look at your lower level lapse rate. So your temperature is changing in height. And yep, we do have that. So this is going to bring up the tornado and hail chances and wind chances, ch chances too. Your middle level lapse rates are marginal. Look at your surface observations. These are your temperatures and dew points. The green is dew points. Your uh, red is temperatures. Let's see a very moist environment in place across this area. I wouldn't be surprised once these storms reach these areas in here. We might see a pretty significant uptick in tornado potential and severe potential in general because of that moist air meeting with the cold air. And behind the front, it's in the 50s behind the front. And in front of the front, it's in the 70s. So that's a drastic change. Even some 40s. <laughs> Here's one of your composite parameters. Here's here's a site tornado parameter. This is for using uh, zero to I think 500 kilometer SRH. I think it is. Yep. So we do have some areas with tornado potential, and especially the Mississippi. This will change throughout the day, though. So this probably will be updated when I be recording this video here. It is the current photograph out of Jackson, Mississippi, and you would turn. You would usually want kind of turning with height in the wind. And actually, this is um, on the line, so it's probably not that great of a photograph. Let's go down to Mobile. This is a bit ahead of the line. Um, it's not loading in a full photograph, which sucks. Happens sometimes at these stations. They don't always load in full photographs, which is annoying. See if you can get one out of Montgomery. And this isn't a full one, but it's not terrible. There we go. Here's a full one. This is from 15 to 13, see, about 10 minutes ago. This looks like more of a northwest flow type of day, so it looks like more of a MCS type of day, but you do have 250 storm relative felicity, so that's enough to get embedded circulations. 23 knots of lower level shear, so enough. Here's our current Mosic radar. Uh, this is updated uh, 8 minutes ago. Currently, looks like we have an area of a, a wide area of showers and thunderstorms in yellow here. We have the pink where our stronger thunderstorms are, and maybe we'll get a severe thunderstorm there in the pink area soon. Here's a look at your future radar. This was last night's uh, HRRR run. I gotta reload Pivotal Weather. Okay, so this is gonna be your future radar. Um, we're currently at 14Z. HRRR starts to. Uh, Strengthen these thunderstorms around 18z and these are some pretty intense storms I wouldn't be surprised to see some tornadic potential especially out in here at this point with these embedded supercells Within the QLCS or quasi linear convective system and that's basically a line of thunderstorms with embedded supercells Take a sounding in the central Mississippi there pretty favorable environment for some isolated tornadic activity Maybe in the south central Alabama. It's more favorable. Yeah, it is a bit more favorable over there You have a bit more wind shear um, as you do see, we get some holistic tracks to kind of start up, especially with this storm. Is it's entering a more favorable environment, I would assume. No, it's really not. More of a hail, probably more of a hailer. Um, this is still a decently favorable environment. Oh, I skipped ahead a bit too many frames. As you can see here, once we get to around 7 p.m., these thunderstorms start to die off from cool alpha flow in here. Maybe an isolated strong one. And then we translate to the Carolinas in the northeast, and I will be talking about that. And we might even get a strong thunderstorm in Florida today. We won't be surprised to see um, a severe thunderstorm running in central Florida today. Um, the environment there looks amp for maybe a wind gust or two. Not really tornadoes, but maybe a wind gust. And then this is how far the h blur goes out, but we don't really need it that far. Let's just look at the Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> Here's the current radar view from the Mid-Atlantic. Just some scattered showers and thunderstorms there. Um, shoot. Uh, when is this gonna load, man? Okay. Took a little bit. Okay. So, right around 18, 19 Z, this is around 2 p.m. This is when we're expecting these thunderstorms to strengthen. We do have high shear low cape scenario with a squall line. Uh, in the Virginia here, if you take some soundings here, this would definitely support some isolated tornadoes. So if you live in, I'd say, this area, watch out for isolated tornadoes today. Even though potential is low, isolated damaging wind gusts and uh, tornadoes are possible in this area today. I do not expect a watch to be issued, though. But you never can rule out a watch. 
and if these thunderstorms get organized like the HRRR shows, we might actually end up seeing a watch. Looks like North Carolina could have a favorable environment here. Yep. Uh, if we do end up looking at how the, how the Cape evolves, evolves throughout the day. Sorry, I had a stroke there. Um, it looks like the air mass starts to heat up really soon here. We start to get some instability getting up into the Carolinas there. 2,000 joules per kilogram in portions of North Carolina and South Carolina. Then that kind of withers away. Let's look at our composite. Let's look at your uh, energy helicity index from 0 to 3 kilometers. A lot of people use this as a composite. Let's just see what it shows. It shows the higher values over Alabama in that area today. So they could have a bit higher tornado potential. But it does get a bit higher into Virginia and North Carolina overnight. Um, let's, let's stop it at 0 Z, and I want to see how strong the line is at this point. Um, pretty, pretty, uh, strong line at this point. If we do end up taking soundings in the area, this would actually support, maybe, maybe they shift the 5% risk of tornadoes up here. We have a pretty favorable sounding here with nearly 2,000 joules per kilogram of Cape, a lot of wind shear. If we can get a supercell that gets surface rooted, we probably will see some tornadoes over there today. Uh, let's look at the, um, helicity tracks from the run max. So, let's see here. HRRR is starting to indicate here a lot of felicity tracks across Mississippi, Alabama, into Georgia, South Carolina, in North Carolina, and Virginia. Um, let's take a look at how the NAM nest evolves this. Um, I just want to see. Felicity tracks with the NAM nest. NAM nest has a pretty vigorous felicity track in the South Carolina there. I want to see how the Namnest evolves in reflectivity, even though it might not be the most accurate thing ever. We'll just check it out anyway to see how it evolves. This is right around 13Z. It's doing the same glitch that HRRR had. That sucks. We gotta wait for this to load more. Oh my gosh, okay. Really? This is literally the best part right here. Come on. I know you can do it, man. Okay, but I guess we can't look at the earlier hours, but it shows an intense squalling into Virginia and Maryland, too. If I end up taking soundings up there, it's probably going to be contaminated due to all the precip, but that's pretty impressive with all the shear there. That's going to be supportive of an isolated tornado threat, and then we get some supercells and other thunderstorms to fire in the Carolinas or at night. Now let's end up taking a look at the GEFS just to go over a broad range of things. We'll go over today and tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but today. So this is the 6C run of the GEFS. So it has, uh, so the models are, not the models, the ensembles are showing super strong composite, um, mean to be 2 to 3 in that yellow area. So from central Alabama over to eastern Texas. Kind of a broad region in there. We could see some higher super strong composite values indicated with that. And this is the mean, so this isn't um this isn't the max, this isn't the one that um isn't as accurate. And then it looks like maybe we get an event on Easter Sunday and thunderstorms can form up there. And Monday we might get an event in the plains. Uh Wednesday uh Tuesday looks interesting, and then Wednesday looks interesting for my area. Um models have been indicating stuff with that. We will go into that now. Actually, I'm gonna switch over to pivotal weather. We're gonna switch over to the Euro model. That's the most. That's not, that's the model that I like looking at the most in the medium range. I, I would give the GFS and Canadian a look, but I don't think we we're gonna have time for those today. Let's see the timestamp. Yeah, we we probably won't have time. Maybe we will. But yeah, the Euro shows a nor'easter. Maybe a small nor'easter happening. And sorry about that noise again. That's wind. I have pretty significant windiest right now. Um, from tight pressure gradients uh, that are ongoing right now across my area. As you can see here, looks like Saturday, Friday next week looks pretty quiet. And then Sunday, I don't think there's going to be much of a threat over here on Sunday unless the instability can get up there and we get thunderstorms to form. Oh, we do get thunderstorms to form. Interesting. Little mini little pressure. Oh, it's too capped. Literally too capped. Um, but... You do see some pretty intense thunderstorms, not intense, but interesting thunderstorms across Wisconsin there with no instability. Looks like those would be hail type, a hail type deal, excuse me. Um, looks like we might get a derecho moving down here. If that actually happens, I'm going to be annoyed because it's not derecho season yet. But um, this would actually favor embedded supercells within the derecho with those wind profiles, weird like that. We have a hodograph that's tilted to the northwest because it's a northwest flow day. And this might look weird to you guys, as we haven't had a northwest flow event yet. But this is typical for the summer in Illinois and not in the spring. So, kind of hope this doesn't happen. 
Oh, it looks like that MCS kind of dies on top of me. Yeah, it's still pretty favorable signs. Wednesday could be another, Tuesday could be another interesting day as that low pressure kind of elongates into Minnesota. Maybe we get an isolated Super Solar 2 to form. Okay, that's actually a very, very, very favorable sounding for tornadoes. You get the curvature there. You don't have the most storm relative velocity ever, but you have nearly 3,000 K. That's going to power it. You have high lapse rates, so this would probably be a day where you'd get like a 30 sig large hail, 5% tornado risk, and 15 sig risk for damaging wind, something like that, and you get a couple super cells to explode, and then they congeal into a, a linear complex. And that literally happens. I called it. That literally happens. The Euro spits out a huge uh, area of... Looks like some supercells, actually, it spits out. A line of supercells from Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, and then multiple other complexes. Interesting. We're going to stop it at 168 here. This is very interesting. We're going to take a sounding in south-central Indiana here, see what we get there. Capped. Very capped, but the Euro actually ends up forming storms. Interesting. Capped again with low instability. The Euro just wants to slam Michigan and Ohio, man. Uh, let's take a look at, like, central Wisconsin there. Probably going to have some interesting soundings with that. Yep. A lot of capping inversion. 3,000 joules per kilogram? Holy cow. Very capped, though. The Euro probably overcaps a lot of the stuff, usually. I want to look at the uh, on most unstable cape and just click where it's highest to just see... 4,000 down here. How fun. Let's just take a sounding down there. 5,000 keep. <laughs> it's that time of year, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, if this actually happens, though, this would be a very large hail sounding, and we'd probably get a few tornadoes with this. Um, Look at that. Small lotograph, but it is. It's got some veering in the lower levels. You have a little bit of shear. Lots of uh, lapse rates to overpower the sounding, and lots of cape. Holy cow. I'm saving this. I'm calling this cape. Oh, man. Cape bomb. <laughs> um, let's let's cherry pick it, or let's just click a sounding in Central Iowa now, boys. Oh, it's literally capped. Darn it, fool you, Central Scott. Or fool you, Central Iowa. Oh, <gasps> that's a good sounding. Not gonna lie, that's a good hodo. You got good veering in the lower levels. You got enough instability. You have a good amount of lap lapse rates. You got a dry slot in the middle levels, lower levels. Oh, that's hot, man. <laughs> Let's move along here. Let's take a look at the next day. Oh, it's just a bunch of bull crap down further south. We don't want southern bull. Oh, <gasps> planes. <gasps> it's just a low pressure. Let's see. Let's see. Is it too capped? Yeah, it's too capped. Darn it. Stupid year, oh man. You're not initiating any thunderstorms. <gasps> Mid-Atlantic? Mid-Atlantic? Question bar? 70? I don't know, man. Oh my gosh. Texas is slamming hot out there, man. Might be a mid Atlantic event, maybe. Let me just take a sounding over there and cherry pick, see what we get. No, that's nothing. That's nothing interesting, man. Boo! Okay, I should shut up now. Um, is that a tropical storm? Why? I don't know if that's a tropical storm or not. It looks like a pretty strong low pressure with a lot of thunderstorms around it, which makes me think. Oh, let's take a look at the 500 mobile bar wind pattern here with this. Nope, nope, not. Nope, no, 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 no. I'm clicking every single wrong button I can right now. Um, that would be a pretty interesting signal. Yeah, that actually might be a tropical system over there. Let's just take a look at 850, see if it's closed off. That actually might be. <laughs> I swear to God if that is. Let me just take a look at the instability down here. Uh, we could have a pretty significant event with this if that happens. Jeez. It's such Oklahoma question mark? Not bad. What about zero Z? What does it do? Well, how, how do the do points get? That's that's a, that's a classic planes event, man. Kind of hope this happens because I want three thousand at the end of the run. This is the end of the run, though. So, classic planes. This is the end of the run, though. So take this with a grain of salt. Let's look at the Canadian, and then we'll be done. Actually, the Canadian is a bit um, on the higher side sometimes. Let's just look at the Canadian for that bit, though. Why not? Uh, we'll look at the Canadian uh, 12Z run here. Let's see here. It's gonna, this is not going to load. It's going to do the thing that the other models did. It's not going to load, man. Actually, I don't care. That's not the fun part. So, oh, that's that's not the fun part either yet, though. Okay, looks like it tries to initiate some stuff on Monday. Tuesday for me? Ooh. Very interesting. Canadian has a very interesting pattern. Let's just look at the surface-based cape, and then we'll look at the 
uh, 500 mil bar wind pattern to see what the Canadian does to see if it actually ends up showing any real severe weather at all. So, shows that moisture advancing with the system today. Then it doesn't want to show Cape for a little bit. Um, there's Sunday. Looks like we get some instability on Sunday. Looks like Monday could pop off out there in Wisconsin and then pop off over me. Oh, that's the 12 Z run. Yesterday? Oh, I guess the Canadian didn't load with the 0 Z run from last night. So I guess we're using... I literally looked up this yesterday. I am dumb. Okay, well, we're going to look at the GFS then. I guess the Canadian said, alright, I'm not going to load. That's great. He always loves to see that. Let me just X that out. We'll just look at the Canadian. Um, we'll just look at what the GFS shows for the pattern here with the precip and stuff. I'm not gonna go too in depth with the GFS. We already went in depth with the Euro. But um, there's our first system. There's our heavy snowstorm, intense snowstorm. Now I haven't looked at the snow totals, but I don't like. I really, I don't think very many people on this channel watch for snow, so it's okay. Um, looks like we might get some scattered thunderstorms Monday. To Monday night. Um, this is a very interesting look. Um, that's a super, that's a supercharged system right there. That would get the planes at play for severe weather, like this area. Whew, let's see, let's see what it shows. It looks like, ooh, that's a nasty look for the planes, man. Look at all that preset there. Let's stop it at, uh, at 183. I knew I wasn't going to go in depth, but this is just so interesting of a look. How much moisture does it have? Okay, yeah, that's a lot of moisture. That would be a pretty significant threat. Let's look at the composite um, parameter here. I will looking pretty hot, not gonna lie. What about zero Z? Probably gonna get a bit lower. Okay, Texas gets a bit higher. No surprise there. It's literally zero Z there. Interesting. Let's go back to the forecast loop. Um, I already have it all loaded, so we're fine. But that's a very interesting look. That'd be a, probably a severe weather, pretty significant severe weather event for the plains in Midwest, and then it shifts over to Kind of Dixie Alley. Looks like you get another low pressure to form. Very interesting stuff, GFS. And then looks like another low pressure forms for the south. And it gets cold again? What? And there's another snowstorm from the northeast. Um, fun. Let's take a look at the snow for the first winter storm with the GFS. Um, I just want to see how much snow it shows. Um, first winter storm. Let's see here. Snow totals right around the 12 inch mark in isolated areas, widespread 2 to 4 inches, and then some areas with 5 to 8. Okay. Uh, let's look at the weather bell now. We'll just look at the instantaneous flash rate and then we'll get out of here. Oh, uh, let's look at the instantaneous flash rate here. This is the 0z run of the euro. Oh, this is the 6z. Never mind. We'll look at the 0z. So, um, I'm going to see here. Okay, so this is going to be tonight, and then tomorrow, looks like Puerto could get on some strong thunderstorms. Bro, Mexico's popping off out there, man. Look at Mexico. <laughs> Boom. Looks like Easter Sunday, the year erupts a few supercells across, um, kind of Kansas, Nebraska area. We already looked at that, but it could be, ooh, overnight area. Looks like Monday looks very interesting, then it drops down another derecho. How fun. Oh, that's pretty supercharged. We probably have supercell here, here if this would verify. This is a very interesting look. You probably have a big area of widespread supercells or embedded linear supercell structures. Then looks like you get a derecho complex with me. Take this with a grain of salt though, because this is pretty far out. And then uh, that's a that's a very that's a very plains and dixie look for severe weather. Uh, if that were to happen, if we stop it at that frame there, looks like, yeah, Oklahoma getting in on that instability. 4,200 Cape Max or 500 Max. And then the average six hours, yep, that's a lot of uh, lightning there. I'm going to put the 500 mil bar bids. Look at the 850. Very, very closed off low. Probably like. Okay, 500 looks like more of a zonal flow, like a normal flow, ne uh, neutral tilt. Interesting. But that is going to do it for this uh, video. If you want to get updated with my forecasts and uh, discussions on here, please drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.